Hello, I'm Charles Coves, Australasia's passion provocateur. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Coves Show, episode 107. Whether you're watching on YouTube or on Rumble or via podcast. In this week's episode, I explore how you make decisions in your life and whether you want them to be wise. What's the benefit of making wise decisions? By way of example, I explore 11 relevant factors that you can take into account in making the decision on whether or not you fly overseas again. Then I explore how you take these relevant factors into account when coming to your decision. If you choose unwisely, there can be a big price to pay. And that applies to whether or not you fly overseas, whether or not you marry person A or person B, or indeed whether you get divorced. I recommend wise choices for you. I'm confident this episode will increase your ability to make wise decisions and lead you along the road to your greater wisdom. I hope you stick around. For regular viewers and listeners, we've changed the format of the show. You can get into the content very quickly. The foundational principles of the Charles Covey show and my background now come at the end of the show. And a further change, my review of what's happened in the world and in my life now comes after this week's unique content. Now, for today's big idea. Is it wise for you to decide to fly overseas? How do you make decisions like this? Is now a good time to go flying? Is wisdom a basis on which you want to make your big decisions? And I think choosing to fly overseas at this moment in time is indeed a big decision. Let's explore 11 relevant factors. There are more than 11, but I think 11 is a good enough number to illustrate the challenge in coming to a wise decision. Number one, have you been jabbed or not? That makes a difference because that determines where you can go and which airlines you can fly with. Number two, Have the pilots of the plane been jabbed? Highly likely to be so. I'm dealing with some Qantas pilots who refused to be jabbed and they've been stood down. I'm also dealing with attorneys in the US helping pilots whose careers have been torn apart because the jabs injured them they can no longer fly again. And just recently, a Texas pilot had a heart attack just after landing a plane. Imagine what that would have done if that had happened during landing. Third factor, the rules relating to jabs of the countries or country that you wish to visit. Fourthly, will you be able to return? Now in Australia, we've had some shocking stories of Australians being unable to come back to Australia because of, because of borders shut. Even that thought of how unfair that is to Australian residents makes me need some caffeine. I love the stuff. Factor number five, the risks of rules changing. The rules seem to change at the whim of politicians. 
you might go overseas and then where you think you're going the rules change and then your ability to come back the rules change i wouldn't trust politicians not making changes on a whim number six new geopolitical issues such as the russian ukraine issue the threat of world war three there's more and more discussions in the paper of hey we're coming up to world war three chinese security issues china and taiwan you go overseas you think you're going for a holiday and then suddenly all hell breaks loose back to number seven you're on a plane for 10 12 14 hours shedding from other jabbed people is a risk you are in a tight conf tight confines the masks they're wearing don't do anything you can take the masks off when you're eating shedding is a real thing back to number eight the medical risks of the country to which you're going the quality of medical care all of it is compromised because of all of the extraordinary experiences we've gone through in the last two years top quality professionals have been stood down lost their jobs because they haven't been jabbed so you might think your previous experience about going to medical care or hospitals in other countries has been okay in the past it will be different now factor number nine the comparative costs of travel have gone up dramatically the cost of flying doubled tripled factor number 10 the purpose of the travel is it business is it pleasure is it i've just got to get out of this place i gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing i ever do is that what's going on for you i just got to get out of here is that going to be wise if you just make it on that basis but anyway what is the purpose of this overseas flight factor number 11 there are different business risks and tourism risks what you thought was a well-functioning tourist system is not going to be so because no industry has been more damaged by the decisions of government than tourism decimated in Australia in many countries in business there are a lot of people whose lives have been torn asunder so the risks of travel have increased so how do you decide to make this decision how do you weigh up all these factors whether you go or whether you stay i think the equation is this this is the essence of wisdom is this good for you or bad for you is this right for you or wrong for you good versus bad right versus wrong but for you and for those whose lives upon whom you impact so you might say i'm making a decision but you might have five children like i do is it good or bad is it right or wrong well the answer to that question those two questions depends on who you are who are you how well do you know yourself in being able to cope with these factors and, and the different factors and how, if things go wrong how do you cope with those how well do you know yourself so that your appetite for anything that happens is fine you don't devastate your life because you can make a decision that has amazing consequences like the Australian academic who went to Iran and was shut up almost in solitary confinement for 880 days Kirsty mm, can't remember her name you can make a decision all sounds very easy to make and then you go to a place and suddenly something happens and bang are you able to cope with those unexpected consequences that's a function of your self-awareness of how well you know who you are of your values 
of what you think the purpose of your life is, the vision of your life, the goals of your life, the virtues that guide your decision making. And I was introduced to some virtues recently of prudence and temperance and justice and fortitude. They're called the cardinal virtues. Prudence, acting prudently. That's what self-awareness and self-knowledge is all about. That's why it's so important to keep going on that journey for the rest of your life. And that's why I run the self-awareness and passion quest. Because as you know yourself, you can then weigh these factors more accurately. So that you make more right decisions rather than wrong decisions. Good decisions rather than bad decisions. This is how you gain wisdom. And then when you make a bad decision, the wrong decision, you can then review it and go, hmm, what were the factors that I took into account? And I suggest when you're making big decisions that you write out what you have taken into account so that you don't fool yourself after the event and say, well, I, I took that into account when you actually didn't. And you go back and check your notes. So you're, you're making deliberate decisions on big decisions. That's how you progress on this journey. And then you might say, hey, hmm, the values that I thought were guiding my decision making aren't actually my values. When you make unwise decisions, they can be life changing. You can make mistakes. I'm all about making mistakes, but there are some life changing decisions you make and they're in the newspapers all the time of young people driving cars on drugs or getting drunk, having four or five passengers and then, you know, going nuts and, and, you know, having an accident and killing two or three of their best friends. We make decisions, I hope they're wise. I strive to make wise decisions. I'm constantly striving to make wise decisions. So that's the big idea. Let's look at the resources that might help you reinforce this big idea. The song, a bit of fun this week on the song. I'm thinking of the Beatles, you know, dear Prudence, dear Prudence, won't you come out to play? Well, think about the Prudence, not as a person, but as the metaphor for your own Prudence coming out in terms of your decision making. Now, don't make them so spontaneously in big issues, small issues. Sure, you know, buy an ice cream or not, you can do that. But the big ones, think about Prudence, think about that song. My book for you is a big book this week. It's a big book of, look at this, wisdom. Oh, this is a big book. Julie, this is a big, big, big book. It's an expensive book, so you might have to get this. This is Wisdom by Andrew Zuckerman with some wonderful stories of wisdom, of insights on wisdom from some amazing people, such as Madeleine Albright, who died recently, Buzz Aldrin, astronaut, Dave Brubeck, and indeed from Dave Brubeck comes this week's quote. In this book of wisdom, you have to be taught to hate. You have to be taught to hate. And what's happened with government decisions over the last two years, they're trying to teach us to hate each other, to be scared of each other. Well, I want to make, I want to bring that reminder to you that you have to teach people to be scared of other human beings. Anyway, back to this book, Book of Wisdom. Billy Connolly, Bryce Courtney, wonderful South African Australian author, Judy Dench, wonderful actor, Clint Eastwood, Malcolm Fraser, former Prime Minister of Australia, Ted Kennedy, Billie Jean King, Henry Kissinger, he was Kissinger, but maybe not now. Nelson Mandela, Willie Nelson, Michael Parkinson, interviewed a lot of people, probably gained a lot of wisdom on the journey. 
Robert Redford, Vanessa Redgrave. Interesting actors. Wonder why they have so many actors? Because they're celebrities, of course. Otherwise, a book of wisdom from people that no one knows anybody wouldn't sell as well as a book of celebrities. So, some great insights. Not a lot of words. Some beautiful pictures. Garrett Fitzgerald. His title to his piece is, Above all, Avoid Cynicism. I like that idea. So that's the book. I've given you the quote. You have to be taught to hate. Are you teaching those around you to hate? My spiritual tip this week is to join, is to contemplate joining a community that is spiritually based. So community groups do work to help other people. That is a spiritually based community. The reason why I bring that to your attention is because in the last week I was made a Knight of Honour of the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, Knights Hospitaller. So I was going to cover that in the review of the week, but it's relevant to this spiritual tip. I have become a Knight of that Order that was founded in 1040, 1040, nearly a thousand years ago, 18 years short of a thousand years ago, because it is spiritually based on Christian principles because I consider that our Western civilization is based on those Christian principles of the last 2000 years. And the key element of Christianity that I honor is that each one of you watching this program, listening to this program matters. That's a Christian idea. That's a crucial Christian idea. I don't want to throw that out with the bathwater. I don't want to go through this cancel culture, woke mentality that says everything of the past is bad in, in the identity politics game. My health tip is a product called ASEA, A-S-E-A, -E and I've had it recommended to me some years ago, and then over the last year I've had two other people have talked about the values of ASEA, so I have now invested in it. Julie has invested in it as a product. I'm testing it. I'm very impressed by the progress. Have a look at ASEA Global, A-S-E-A Global.com to find out more about it. It could be what you're looking at, what you're considering. It could be the magic trick, the magic potion for your health challenges. And my humour for the week, since we're deciding whether or not to go flying, well, I've got some, I've collected these, these uh, bits of humour about flying that tickle my fancy. This was on a continental flight with a very senior flight attendant crew. The pilot said, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached cruising altitude and we'll be turning down the cabin lights. This is for your comfort and to enhance the appearance of your flight attendants. <laughs> On a Southwest Airlines flight, this was heard. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to smoke, the smoking section on this airplane is on the wing. And if you can light them, you can smoke them. <laughs> As the plane landed and was coming to a stop at Ronald Reagan Airport, a lone voice came over the loudspeaker. Whoa, big fella, whoa. <laughs> And from the pilot during his welcome message, Delta Airlines is pleased to have some of the best flight attendants in the industry. Unfortunately, none of them are on this flight. <laughs> and the last one, an airline pilot wrote that on this particular flight, he'd hammered his ship into the runway really hard. The airline had a policy which required the first officers to stand at the door while the passengers exited, smile, and give them a thanks for flying our airline. He said that in light of his bad landing, he had a hard time looking the passengers in the eye, thinking that someone would have a smart comment. Finally, everyone had gotten off except for a little old lady walking with a cane. She said, sir, do you mind if I ask you a question? Why no, ma'am, said the pilot. What is it? The little old lady said, did we land or were we shot down? <laughs> Isn't that cute? Isn't that so funny? I love it. I love it. I love it. So, think about how today's big idea can make a big difference to your life. 
a life that I believe is meant to be all that you are capable of making it. My aim for this show is to provoke you, to inspire you, to motivate you, to educate you, to examine your life now and for the rest of your life so that you are constantly increasing your levels of self-awareness. I invite you to subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the Rumble channel, sign up for Passion Points to Ponder on covest.com and charlescovest.com. Discover more about the self-awareness and passion quest at charlescovest.com. Corporate programs, public programs can all be discovered at covest.com. You can access both my books, Passionate People Produce and Passionate Performance on both of those websites. Now, let's review some key happenings on the planet and in my life. Today is the 1st of May. Officially Workers Day. That's when they would have the May Day celebrations in Russia. May Day, the 1st of May was also my father's only sister's birthday. She died many years ago. But when it comes on the 1st of May, I never forget that day. Some of you might have missed an episode or two because YouTube suspended us for daring to cross the censorship threshold. When I published a Q&A of somebody else on this channel, it wasn't even a listed program. And this was the second strike. So there might be a third strike, you know, with YouTube. Dan Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, is proving to lead a very corrupt government. The Herald Sun, major paper, two-page spread two days ago on all these corrupt activities. What is amazing is that most people couldn't give a rat's. And why is that? Because the Liberals, the key opposition party in this state, is so pathetic, literally pathetic. How a corrupt government like led by Daniel Andrews can still be ahead in the polls shows how pathetic the Liberals are. There is a federal election happening in Australia. The promises are coming thick and fast, spending all of your money. Hey, we'll give you all this money, give you all this wonderful stuff. It's sickening. The lack of principles being discussed in this election are mind boggling. And, and I don't think any of the major parties deserve to govern in their own right. I'm in favor of a hung parliament I'm in favour of a haggle happening on all key issues because these politicians are absolutely not willing to put their principles to test. They're not willing to have anybody disapprove of them. They have the mainstream media criticise them, so they're basically saying nothing other than promising more money to everybody. That'll be a good outcome for our kids and our grandchildren, won't it? Spend more money, spend... That'll put us in the hands of the financiers globally so that we lose our sovereignty so that all sorts of crucial wise services that government can provide don't actually get provided it's like making an unwise decision in your own life isn't it just blow all your money and then live on welfare good to see that Piers Morgan uncensored has now has now appeared on sky on the sky channel on foxtel it's a global pro program. The first two programs were his interview with Donald Trump. Well worth watching a, a recording of it. But he said, I will be uncensored. I will fight for free speech. And Elon Musk says he's going to fight for free speech for Twitter. That'll, we wait and see on that, whether that's actually going to come to pass. But there is a big movement happening. I'm delighted to see it. And I urge every single one of you to not put up with woke BS with cancel culture with identity politics. The stupidity of identity politics is people walking around saying, I deserve special consideration because I've had a tough time. Well, I'll give you my identity. You know, I'm a second born child. There you are. Second born children suffer in particular ways. Julie's a second born child as well. Oh, but my parents were refugees. That's right. I'm a second born child of Hungarian refugees. Hmm. Yes. Well, I didn't, we, did, we didn't have much money. So there you are. There's another identity that I can jump into. Not much money when I was young. My parents couldn't speak the language perfectly. And I was a second child of six. Oh, yes, that's right. I was a second child of six. That puts me into a unique category. 
I deserve compensation. Can you see the stupidity of this whole argument? I hope you can. And during the week, I became a Knight of the Order of St. John. And I also continued all of my exercise. Julie continued her exercise and this ongoing decision, as I, as I shared yesterday with my son, I'm constantly making disciplined decisions. Often I don't feel like doing the exercise, but I do it. Why? Because it makes a massive difference to how I live the other 168 hours of each week. And also on, at 7 p.m. on Friday nights, Julie and I produce foam, a weekly vitamins for the mind and the soul to help you cope with the challenges of what's happening on our planet with government overreach. So if you want invitations, special invitations to those foam meetings, please get in touch with us. So if you're again new to the show, stick around for the next section where I share our foundational principles for this show, discussions around freedom and also my background. Again, thanks for watching or listening. Until our next show, may your week be filled with fun, challenge, passion, learning and growth so that you continue to embrace this magnificent gift that we have called life. Thanks for being with us. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye. And now, for viewers and listeners who want to know more about my background and what else I do with my life, as well as the foundational principles of the show, here we are. Since 1993, when I left my legal career, a career that I love to become Australasia's passion provocateur, I have inspired and provoked and educated and motivated people all over the world to discover and pursue their passion. I have helped people via the books that I've written, via speeches at conferences, via in-depth team building programs, workshops over one, two or three days or over three months, six months. And I've coached people of all ages, one-on-one -on -one from small, medium and large enterprises, government enterprises, helping them to identify the often tiny changes that can make a massive difference. One of my core principles is that freedom is what makes us truly human. That's why one of the th greatest threats that government imposes on you to force you to observe its laws is the threat of imprisonment, the loss of your freedom. Just think about that. Government says, if you don't behave yourself, we're going to put you in jail. No, no, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to lose my freedom. That's a reminder to you of why freedom is so important. Without freedom, you and I are not much different to animals. If you were locked up in a cage for the rest of your life, how, how different would you be to an animal? This commitment to fighting for freedoms for all people is carried out by me th made primarily through five channels. Number one, preserving the freedom to pursue your passion. Number two, inspiring you to be able to be free through excellent health. Number three, helping preserve freedom throughout the world through the expansion of industrial hemp, a magnificent agricultural crop, an almost miraculous crop that enables every community to thrive independently of government. In this way, the power of government to take away freedom is minimized. Number four, fighting for freedom through legal strategies. So I do work as a legal strategy consultant, as an interface between clients and their lawyers. And number five, as chairman of the Australian Institute of Comedy and as a board member of the Australian Cartoon Museum, fighting for the freedom of thought and speech through uncensored comedy and humour through avoiding political correctness in the comedic space. 
When you block freedom of speech, freedom of thought, that's the beginning of the end of your freedoms. The foundational principles for The Charles Covest Show are founded on the formula SA plus P equals S. Your self-awareness added to your passion will guarantee that you are successful. And the best definition of success I have found in life is that success is the progressive realization of your worthy ideals. The progressive realization of your worthy ideals. This show is also guided by Socrates' famous principle and quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket. I wear my red jacket for all my shows. Red is the color of passion. So that when you see me on the YouTube version, it reminds you that when you see red in your life, you ask yourself the question, am I pursuing my passion? What am I passionate about? Am I still passionate about that? What might I newly be passionate about? Each week I explore one big idea that can change your life. And it's just one big idea because there's a chance you will remember it. If I give you too many ideas, then we, we get confused and we don't do anything. Clarity leads to power. Confusion kills passion. Each week I share simple and practical resources that you've heard me describe in the earlier part of the show. A spiritual tip, a health tip, lyrics of a song, a book, a quote, and of course humour. This show is not politically correct. I have no intention of being politically correct. And I love certain addictions, including my addiction to great coffee. Mmm. My addiction to exercise, my addiction to reading, and my addiction to certain other unmentionable in public type behaviors. Who would know what they are? This show definitely subscribes to the view that we have a spiritual life. So if you don't like discussion of spirituality, this show is not for you. I promise you that I don't include anything in this show that I don't consider to be true and that I have not found to be useful in the work that I've done over the past 28 years, but also over the past 50 years in business, as a lawyer, as a consultant advisor. I only want to share stuff with you that is of value to you. Finally, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact me at charles at Again, thanks for watching and listening to my show. Bye.